Hi, welcome to Art Connection. I'm Jessica McKay. So you've gotten the grandkid the bike and you got your cousin a tie, but what do you get the people in your life that you would like to give them something more unique and special? Well, why not come down here to the Artist Studio Gallery of the PV Art Center and give them some original work by local artists. Let's check out what they have. <laughs> we thought oh a few pieces of art and that would be great and we've expanded to be more than just a gallery and a place for artists local artists to sell work but also to a family a cooperative family and we do we've expanded the walls of our gallery because we now do off-site shows we do two runway shows of wearable art at the art center we do a studio tour annually we do Malaga Cove shows. So about how many artists are affiliated with the um, Art Center? It depends. With, with the Artist Studio, about uh, between 70 to 80 artists. And one of the things that we like to say, Don, do you want to bring the poster over? Um, years ago, one of our artists, long retired, coined this about us, the best kept secret on the hill. And I've used, on this banner, I've used a painting by Bob Dowdy. And I think this guy looks like a secret agent making a phone call. Because the wonderful thing is we not only have art to wear that is all ranges of affordable, not only for Christmas, but year round. We're rarely closed. We're open seven days a week. And we, we have artists that do commissions of your home and family and portraits of houses and specialty jewelry. Um, I'm wearing jewelry by one of our local artists, Vicki Zamborski Beautiful. and Francis Wong. And then the coat I'm wearing today, because I'm an art to wear curator. I've curated shows in LA and for the Art Center. And I call it, you don't need it to rain to wear a raincoat, <laughs> particularly in California. So we're very actively involved. Every artist, every day, a different artist staffs the gallery. So when you come in, you not only see original art, but you get to meet one of the artists. We have everything from original cards made by artists to small ornaments for Christmas, to moderately priced gifts, to paintings that are very large and everything from watercolor, photography, oils. We also have a program that you can rent art. You can not only, if you love something, you can lay it away, Everybody knows about layaway today. <laughs> but you can also rent a painting and know whether you like it and decide whether you want to keep it or not. And if you want to keep it, what you pay in rental goes against the purchase price of it. So we have a lot of good things going on. And you yourself are an artist, is that I right? I'm an artist. Uh, I started out as a printmaker. And one of my original prints is on the front of a book I've just finished, which is I've, I've always been a writer. I am a professional writer. But um, mostly now I do poetry. And where I had small chapbooks, I just finished one that is 52 poems and 70 some pages. And of course, I think it's the most beautiful book in the world. Yeah. It's three steps backward from planet Earth. You're a 3D artist. Will you tell us a little bit about this piece that you're holding? This is Paula Pond Skater. Uh, let's see. She is made out of ceramic and found objects. And um, about three years ago, I adopted a little girl who was nine months old. And I took the year off, and we spent nearly every day outside <laughs> looking around and um, discovered that she really has an affinity for bugs. And I thought, you know, let's, there are a lot of reasons why I should go with this so i did and um but the thing is that with bugs they have super skinny little legs and antennas and they break made out of clay so i thought hey let's let's use stuff that's not going to break so i went to home depot and i looked around and i was like oh this would be cool that would be cool but it's really expensive and then i remembered my dad uh actually my family has a building in pomona california that was once a hotel, and then it became 
a furniture store, and then it became an art gallery. And uh, all of the detritus from its various lives have ended up in the basement of this building. And so I went down there and I got a whole bunch of skeleton keys and a whole bunch of just stuff <laughs> and used it. So the, these keys are left over from the hotel days. I'm not sure what they were for, but I think they look like uh, little cabinets of sorts. And then these um, actually don't come from that stockpile. Uh, <laughs> I also teach at Chadwick School. I teach art. And we had a fire at the beginning of school two years ago. And um, the fire started at Crenshaw and came up the hill and stopped right on our boundary of our football field. And this is these are shot put markers. If you look at them that way, they might oh. look a little oh, bit okay. more familiar. Um, and they got burnt. So I asked, can I have them? And they said, sure. And I thought, this would be great for those little bugs that swim in the water. So she's a pond skater. And I love what a, a great, beautiful story that goes along with the piece as well. So it's fun that it's not only found and three-dimensional, but it also has some really great meaning to it, too. Yeah, thank you. My dad is a ceramic artist, and um, he knows a lot of ceramic really important ceramic people. And I walked into his studio one day and sat down. I was like, man, I'm going to inherit all of this stuff. I have absolutely no idea what it's for or even how much it's worth. I mean, I can't even sell it if I wanted to. So I learned it, how to do it, and I uh, took advantage of his resources and learned how to raku fire, which is what this is. It's a Japanese form of uh, f firing the glaze onto the clay. And that's what it looks like on the other side. It's just really fun to do, and I, it's very centering for me. I have to uh, become one with m myself before I can actually um, sit down and throw a bowl, because it, otherwise it just goes wonky and lopsided. <laughs> so with the uh, firing process, what you do is you take this piece, when it's red hot, you pull it out of the, the, the kiln, it's about 1,800 degrees, all of the glaze is melted in it, and you pull it out and get it into the air, which is going to be anywhere between 60 and 90 degrees. And um, the shock, the thermal shock that occurs, uh, makes these crackle glazes, it's supposed to crack, crackle. And what I've learned over the years is that if I spit on them, I can actually get a better crackle pattern. <laughs> so this little spot right here, and that little spot, and that little spot is where the spit landed. And um, then what you do is put it in an uh, environment where it smokes. So I use a metal trash can and shredded documentation. They, they smoke for about 10 minutes. So the smoke then pull, goes in all these little cracks and then pulls all the really cool colors out of the glazes. And um, that's what it looks like on the other side. And then I stick it in water to uh, cool it off, and wash it off, and it's done. And I title each one uh, having to do with personal aspirations of mine. This one's titled is Wonder. I started making the bugs two years ago. I've been making the larger animals for about three or four years. And um, I decided to go smaller for a couple reasons. One is that my back is lousy and they're heavy. <laughs> and the other is that I started having technical problems with the clay. And I thought, let, I, I changed clay bodies, and I thought, if I change the, the type of clay that I use, and I work smaller, then if I have the same kinds of problems, um, it won't be quite as devastating. <laughs> um, but also, if I, um, if I have those problems, then I know that it's me and not the clay, and I haven't had the problems. So anyway, I, the bugs are working for me right now. And, I'm happy with them, and I might return to the animals later if I find someone who can carry them for me. <laughs> Maybe when your daughter grows up. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> About 10 years. <laughs> so there are quite a few other three-dimensional artists here in the gallery. Can you uh, give us a little tour of a few of them for us, please? I'd be more than happy to. Um, this work is by Adrian Sandstrom, <clears throat> and the really neat thing about his, his quite a few neat things about it, but they are a metaphor for his life. So they start 
at the base, they're, they're grounded. And he asked the question, grounded in what? That's your decision. <laughs> and then as it goes up, um, when you throw a bowl, you start with this lump of clay and you stick your hand in and you pull the clay up. And the wheel that you're working on spins in a circle. So if you will imagine each layer being a circle, it's kind of like the rings on a tree. Um, he thinks of the circles as being different phases of life. And some circles are perfect and some are a little off shape and a little, you know, tweaked in some ways. And that's just, you know, how life is. Sometimes it's going really well and sometimes you get kicked in the pants. <laughs> so um, that's, that's kind of the story behind his actual throwing. And then his surface decoration is just astounding to me. Um, each one of these pots gets fired numerous times. So he airbrushes a bottom color, a base color on. And then he applies um, another color. And then if you look, like even on this ornament right here, the, uh, this is the effect of him going back and carving through the, the top glaze and exposing the bottom glaze. Oh, wow. So, and then here on this vase right here. And then he fires it. And then um, like this right here is a different glaze that he's put on top and it's, I think, refired it and um, it's melted down and that's the intention of that glaze. And then he, he puts a luster glaze on. So anything that has a metallic uh, finish to it is a, is a completely different firing. And they're just stunningly beautiful. Yeah. I mean, just incredible. And you did mention the ornaments. And of course, if someone did want something as a gift, it's a really nice little piece. So. Mm -hmm. And it could be hung in a window as opposed to a tree. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't be used all year round. All year, <laughs> or all winter. <laughs> Well, here's another really unique 3D artist. Can you tell us a little bit about the artist and his work? Yes, this is work by Richard Terasaki. Uh, it, this is turned wood, so um, similar to ceramics, but different. He actually takes his forms from uh, the ceramic shapes, uh, the historical ceramic shapes. He learned how to turn wood from his father at a very young age, so he's been turning wood for a long time. Um, he did have a career as an engineer um, and then returned to wood once he retired. Um, one of the things that he does, uh, <clears throat> like this piece, he'll take, uh, I think this is a walnut and a maple. And what he'll do is take the, the pieces of wood and glue them together. So that's called laminating. And then um, he'll, he'll put it on his uh, turning, um, lathe and then he turns it on it spins around and then the tools carve it out and um, it's a really beautiful piece he he is also unique in that he gives all of his proceeds to doctors without borders so um, he's very generous in that way well thank you so much for showing us these three-dimensional artists and their work well why don't we check out some of the wall art we're standing here with another of the great artists here in the gallery anita gerlach anita is a local and uh, she does some really great stuff for the animal lovers i love to do animals i like to make them come to life and the kitty up here with the ball <laughs> i use that on my christmas card this year so um and then this kitty down here this is the first time I've done water like that. I think it turned out okay. <laughs> Surprise. So Tell us about this little kitten. Well, my son takes a lot of the photographs for me, and then I paint from the photograph. And my granddaughter does takes pictures too. And so this little one, I was just trying to get him so that he really looked like he was fuzzy on the stomach there. <laughs> and anyway, and he's just playing with a leaf and the branch. And you do other animal paintings as well, I right? Do, I do horses, a lot of horses. And um, I went out to Shambhala, to uh, Tippi Hedren's place, 
and took a lot of photographs out there, the tigers and lions. So I did those and gave her two of the paintings of her tigers. That was fun. Well, let's go see some of the other, our other artists as well. So uh, one of the photographers you have here in the gallery is this gentleman, Philip Earle. Show us his and tell a little bit, us a little bit about him. Yes, he uh, does usually black and white photographs. And um, he said that he takes several pictures and then um, stitches them together and then makes the longer one. And um, he also, for Christmas, did some great calendars. Um, they're colored photos of places on the peninsula. And so this is kind of a good gift Wonderful for Christmas. It's really clever the way he did it, too. So you just switch out whichever month you want to be in front. And then if you want to put it away, very convenient little carrying case. Can you please tell us a little bit about Elma Beck and what she means to the studio? Elma Beck was such a dear friend, and she died last month. Um, her son is the chief of police in Los Angeles, and um, they had her funeral down there at Royal Palms in San Pedro. Anyway, her work is displayed here with the rest of the artists. Um, all the artists are included in the show, so she was included also. And over here we have Bob Dowdy, who was the gentleman whose painting was on the banner we saw earlier, That's right? That's right. And he works in what kind of medium? Uh, he works in water, watercolor. And um, he has a studio down in San Pedro, and his work is sold a lot. <laughs> All right, so I understand every year there is this artist studio tour that goes on. Can you tell us a bit about that? The studio tour uh, last year was in September, and next year it's going to be September the 10th and 11th. Last year we had 11 studios on the tour, plus the two galleries. And Joy Gonzalez, whose work you're seeing right now, her home was on the studio tour. And um, it's a lot of fun. We sold over 500, about 550 tickets to come to it. We serve lunch along the way. Um, and there are other artists at the different homes displaying their work also. And it's just a lot of fun. It's, it sounds like an amazing time. And one of the other artists that uh, is, participates on the tour is Don Crocker. And we're going to go and talk to him right now. And we are here with Don Crocker. Don, um, you are one of the uh, artists here, of course. Yeah. And you do oil paintings, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, generally, I do paintings outside. I do night scenes as well as uh, more, uh, sunsets and uh, local scenes all up and down the coast, but a lot of local scenes here, but I also paint in Alaska and up and down the coast. And uh, I love to do mountain scenes also. And uh, I paint from somebody's view. Various people hire me to paint their view, and I'm happy to do that. And I'm part of the Artist Studio Tour, so on uh, the stu artist, when this Artist Studio Tour takes place, there's lots of paintings for them to, to take a look at. And I wanted to also mention that if you are an artist and you'd like to be part of our group because it's a co-op arts group, you can come into either of our galleries up at the Arts Center or down here at the Village and uh, pick up an application. We do three juryings a year, and you need to be juried into the group, but if you'd like to be, have your credentials considered, we'd be happy to have you consider that. Also, we do free gift wrapping for any of your purchases, and we have a coupon that gives a 10% discount that if you received our card, please bring our card in announcing this show. But if you don't have a card, uh, come into our studio, pick up a card, because there's cards in the counter, and ask for your 10% discount, because that's a very special opportunity. But we really do have a lot of wonderful art here, as you've seen from the various uh, presenters and also from the pan of the, all the different art. So I hope you'll come in and visit our art galleries, either up at the Art Center or down here at the uh, Village Gallery. And uh, there's always an artist here. There's one of the artists that participates in the show. They can talk about their art and uh, all the other art. So we hope you'll visit. And uh, we really would look forward to seeing you. And we deeply appreciate all the support we get from the community because it's really, really nice to work with a lot of local folks coming in and picking out art for their homes or businesses. 
Well, thank you so much, Don. I know it's a uh, it's a really special thing to have a resource like this in the community, and also for even if you're not an artist, you can come in, appreciate art, uh, patronize the artists, and get a really great Christmas present for any of your friends or family. So if you'd like to find out more information about the Artist Studio Gallery, you can go to the website or you can just swing on by and check it out. It's located in the Village Shopping Center right next door to the Promenade and the Library. See you next time on Art Connection. I'm Jessica McKay.